Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a bit of a special one. I am going to be going over 10 of the best money making methods that I could think of. And these are going to be mostly aimed towards high level players. These money making methods are extremely good. A lot of them are going to be able to make you well over 10 mil per hour. And I have organized each of the methods based off of the amount of money you can make per hour. I'll also be including timestamps to each method in this video just so you guys can jump back and forth pretty easily because it is probably going to be a pretty long video going over 10 different methods. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy and let's get into the video. Now starting off with our first money making method, we have killing living wyverns. So there are a few requirements to this method including 96 slayer and 89 herb lore. The 89 herb lore is for the super worm fire potions. Also recommended is 90 plus melee stats, 95 prayer for curses, and 96 herbler for overloads. Living wyverns are a pretty tough creature to kill, so you'll basically want max stats when you are trying to kill them. They do hit really hard, and there are a few mechanics to them as well, so you do need to pay attention and know what you're doing. Now, as you guys can see, I did include... A sample gear setup and inventory setup so I am using masterwork I really highly recommend using dual wield over two-handed weapons that's because you get in melee distance so the living wyverns will only attack with melee rather than using all three combat styles so this makes it a lot easier so I do highly recommend using dual wield weapons also as you can see I have my holy overloads my super restores I also have the worm fire potion and then also bring some anti-poison since you will need these for this fight. Then also I like bringing the magic notepaper just to note the bones. And that is basically it. Leave some inventory spaces because these guys have a lot of different drops. Um, but of course you will need some food and probably should bring a beast of burden with food as well. Especially if you're new to this method. The Living Wyvern's Lair is located in the Asgarnian Ice Dungeon, and once you do reach this dungeon, there are a few mechanics that you do need to worry about, especially a cold feature. So essentially what this is, is when you do enter the dungeon, your player will become cold, and you'll have around 20-25% cold mechanic. And once you do light one of the bonfires, you don't require any logs, you can just light them automatically. Um, when you stand next to them, basically you will... Um, actually lower your cold temperature now this is really important to do whenever you get around 60 or 70 percent coldness that's because the more cold that you are the more damage you will be taking from the wyvern poison so for example when you are at about 25 percent coldness you will be taking about 900 damage every four or five ticks compared to 2500 damage if you do have 90 percent Cold. So do keep an eye on that meter. It should be on your debuff bar. And whenever it gets a bit too high, just go to one of these bonfires, light it, and stand next to it. You can also kill a living wyvern that's near the bonfire while you're there, um, so you don't waste out on any kills per hour. Now aside from that, the other really big thing that you want to pay attention to with the living wyverns is staying within melee distance. That's why I want you guys to use the dual wield weapons. So when you are within melee distance, they only use melee. So you can use protect or deflect melee, which makes it a lot easier. Now, another thing you will always want to have your worm fire potion active and then also have the anti-poison active as well. Um, you will be constantly taking damage from the um, poison that the, worm, that the living wyverns do uh, emit. But um, depending on the cold meter, as I mentioned, it will uh, actually lower it if you have a lower coldness. Living wyverns do attack you pretty hard, and you will actually be taking a lot of damage from them. But don't worry, if you do have your vampirism aura and even a vampirism scrimshaw active, then you shouldn't have any problem. You might even be able to get away without using the vampirism scrimshaw. However, it does make it a little bit easier and just more relaxing if you do have it active. Um, but just... Pay attention to your health bar, make sure you aren't getting too low on life points, eat when you when necessary, um, but overall you should be fine doing this. Um, they don't have too many life points, so you should be able to kill them pretty quickly, and you shouldn't be able to take too much damage from them. Now moving on to our next method, we have making the Water Fiend Binding Contracts. 
there are a few requirements including 50 Slayer as well as 68 Archaeology and the Dagon by Mystery completed. This is basically completing the Infernal Source Mysteries so make sure you have that completed so you can make the binding contracts. Also recommended is 85 plus range since you will be killing the Water Fiends and they are weak to range. I really don't recommend using any other combat style. So you will want at least 85 range if you are looking at doing this method effectively. So also from this method you can make around 12 mil per hour if you do have these requirements and recommendations. So the first step to this method is making sure that you have the binding contracts. You can make them using two blood of orcas and two hellfire metal along with a blue charm um, and some spirit shards. So just make a bunch of these, you can actually get around 600 um, binding contracts per hour. So if you do have 600 in your inventory, um, that will last you about one hour at Water Fiends, so I would recommend about that. Um, and that is the first step to this method, so get your binding contracts and then you'll be heading to the Ancient Caverns where you will be killing the Water Fiends. So once you are in the Ancient Caverns, the Water Fiends are all around and they are really easy to kill, so this should be a pretty easy part to the method. It's actually a pretty chill method for making 12 mil per hour, um, since Water Fiends are so easy to kill. You won't need any food basically, um, and you will be getting a lot of ranged XP per hour as well, since Water Fiends are one of the better creatures to train ranged. So overall, this is an excellent money making method, and you'll not only make your 10 to 12 mil per hour, you'll also get uh, upwards of 500k ranged XP per hour. Now moving on to our next method, we have Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter is an exceptional money making method. It's one of the better skilling money making methods in the game and you can make around 12 mil per hour doing it. Requirements include 90 Hunter. This is for the mid tier Big Game Hunter dinosaurs. It's because you'll make the most money off of this. Um, but you can do the low level. You'll make around 8 mil per hour and you'll need 75 Hunter instead. Um, but we're just going to look at the mid-game, big-game Hunter Dinosaurs for now. So requirements are 90 Hunter, 70 Slayer. Recommended is Bladed Dive, Surge, and Double Surge, as well as the Mobile Perk. You'll really want to be moving around fast just so you can get out some tight pinches with Big Game Hunter. So if you do have all of these recommendations, that will definitely help. So the Big Game Hunter Dinosaurs are located on Anachronia. As I mentioned, we are going to be doing the mid-game Big Game Hunter Dinosaurs. This includes the Spicati Apoterosaur, the Aceatops, and the Corpicula Rex. You can see they are in the bottom right part of this map, those three dinosaurs there. So when you are doing Big Game Hunter, you can usually only do a dinosaur for approximately 20 minutes at a time. So you will be switching between each of these three um, every about 20 minutes, meaning you can do all three in about an hour. Now, a Big Game Hunter does require quite a bit of knowledge about it. Um, I will also link a Big Game Hunter guide just to give you guys a full in-depth look at it, but I'll briefly explain it in this video. So what you're going to want is the bait for each of the dinosaurs. This dinosaur right here that we are doing is the Corbicula Rex. So it requires the raw skim tops meat. So you'll need to purchase this and then you can start your Big Game Hunter instance. The first thing you'll, you'll want to do when you do Big Game Hunter is collect a bunch of logs. You'll need these logs for three things. One, you can make them into the wooden spears, which you will be shooting at the dinosaur to kill it. You'll also need one log and one vine to make the scorpions. And then you'll also need a log for the pressure plate in the middle. So for each dinosaur encounter, you'll need at least seven logs and three vines. So I like starting off by chopping about 10 to 15 logs, and then also making about six or seven arrow shafts. That way I'll have them later on in the next few encounters of the dinosaur. You'll also want to collect some vines as well, and then you'll want to poison your spears by clicking on one of the frogs. So in your first encounter, you'll want to pick just two of the colors. You can choose between yellow, blue, and red. So for example, I will tip two of them uh, yellow and then one of them blue. That way I will be able to figure out which poison is the strongest against the dinosaur. Once you have this figured out, then you will only need to use three spears to kill the dinosaur. So the first encounter will always be slower. Um, it will require basically two rounds of this. 
um, whereas the next few encounters will only require one. So once each of the three scorpions are built and the pressure pad is built, you can bait the pressure pad. Now in this cutscene, you can see uh, the arrows shoot out and you'll get to see how much damage each arrow does. So I have two yellow and one blue. You can see that the yellow arrows did 30,000 damage, which is the max hit, meaning that this dinosaur is weak against uh, the yellow arrows. So for now on, you're only going to want to use yellow arrows for the rest of this encounter. So this makes the rest of it pretty easy since you'll only need one arrow or two arrows to kill the dinosaur and then you can loot it. Um, you're going to be making a lot of money off of the Dragomatic. It's priced at about 20 mil right now and you do have a 1 in 101 chance at getting it. Um, so a lot of the money does come off of that although there is a lot of other drops. If you are killing the Corbicula Rex you will be getting the Corbicula Rex meat which is priced at about 250k each. So you're going to be making a lot of consistent money off of this one as well. And same with all of the mid-tier dinosaurs. That's why I recommend you guys do these ones. Now moving on to our next method, we have killing lava strike worms. This is one of my favorite methods. It's just because it is so simple and you can make 10 mil per hour doing it. So the only requirement is 94 Slayer. And then also recommended is the Elite Wilderness Tasks. This will allow the Searing Ashes drop from the Lava Strike Worms to be noted. So it is a really useful thing to have completed. Also make sure you do have around 90 plus combat. That will make the killing the Lava Strike Worms much easier. And an Amulet of Glory is really helpful just for a quick teleport out. Lava Strike Worms are located in the Wilderness. So make sure you're only bringing equipment that you are willing to lose. So don't bring anything too expensive. Um, if you guys can see, I am using a noxious bow. That's because you do get to protect one item. I also do bring some fury shark, just in case I do run out of prayer points. So I do get to keep that one item no matter what. So even though lava strike worms are an exceptional money making method, they are located in the wilderness. So it does make them a little bit risky. Now I would recommend bringing a pretty good weapon um, a nice one that I usually do bring is the Royal Crossbow since it's really cheap to make um, and I'm willing to lose it. Although you can also bring a Noxious Longbow. You can even go ahead and get the Hellfire Bow located in the Wilderness. Although the downside about this is that you will constantly be pinging your location to other players while you do have it on. Um, so in that case, just choose whichever one you would prefer. But the nice thing about Lava Strike Worms is that they do drop the Searing Ashes. If you do have the Elite Wilderness task completed, they're going to be noted. So you can stay here for a while. Searing Ashes are worth like 50k each. And you can kill about 80 to 100, even 120 of these per hour. So you're going to be making a ton of money. It is a little bit dependent on if you're going to find a PK -er or not. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, it really is just the luck of the draw, but overall, this is a nice money being method to be aware of, and you guys could try it out every once in a while. Now, moving on to our next money making method, we have casting Ophidian Incubation. This requires 63 summoning, and that is it. You'll make around 8 mil per hour doing this method. It is a bit of a boring method, and you don't get too much XP from it, but it is pretty profitable for a method that only requires level 63 summoning. So in order to start this method, you will want to purchase a Spirit Cobra pouch as well as some regular eggs and the Ophidian Incubation Scrolls. Also purchase some Spiritual Prayer Potions as well that will allow you to restore your summoning points because you will be using these really frequently for the entire method. So basically for this method you'll want to summon the Spirit Cobra and you will be using the Spirit Cobra's special ability with the Ophidian Incubation Scroll and you'll be casting that on these eggs. Make sure to set up a preset just to make this really fast since you will be going through these eggs pretty quickly. Once the preset is made you can actually go to your familiar interactions option and you can make it so your special move is key binded to the summoning icon. That way you can put it into a key bind. So as you can see, I key binded mine to B. So whenever I click B, I can cast it on each egg. It makes the method a little bit more effective. 
Um, and you'll just be doing this on each of the eggs when you run low on summoning points. Drink a dose of your spiritual prayer potion. And you'll just be continuing this method over and over again. Each of the eggs costs around 900 GP each. And the cockatrice eggs are selling for around 7k each. So you're making a really nice profit on each of these eggs. And you should be able to do around 2,000 to 2,300 of these eggs per hour. This next money making method is harvesting cursed energy. There actually aren't any requirements for this method, however recommended is a high divination level and the divine conversion relic from archaeology. This also does require level 98 archaeology. Um, it basically just makes it so you'll be able to um, convert all of your memories to energy instantly rather than doing it one at a time. If you do have a high combat level as well, this would help with this method since it is in the wilderness. And if you do have cursed energy on you, you can be attacked by anyone, no matter your combat level. So for this method, I think the best way to do it is actually by bringing some pretty cheap gear that you're willing to lose and killing some of the cursed energy bots while you are harvesting the cursed energy. That way you are going to be constantly picking up, you know, one or 200 cursed energy every few minutes when you do kill these bots it does just boost the amount of energy you can get per hour now that being said you are in the wilderness as well and it is a multi-combat zone so do be wary of pkers you can find two of them that team up on you and you really don't have a chance at getting away so do keep in mind with that um, you might not even be able to reach eight mil per hour since it is in the wilderness However, if you are doing this PKing method, you might even be able to get more. So it's a bit of a risky method and there's high risk, high reward involved in it. Personally, I find the PKing part pretty fun as well. So I would recommend you guys at least try this out. Um, it's just interesting to see how much curse energy you can get. Sometimes you'll even find someone doing the same thing that has one or two thousand cursed energy on them. So if you're doing that and kill them, it is a ton of fun. Curse energy sells for around 400 GP each, trading to other players, or you can convert it into incandescent energy if you do have 95 divination. This next method is killing crystal shapeshifters. So killing crystal shapeshifters do require level 99 slayer, and that's to put them in the sunken pyramid. You're only going to want to do this method if they are in the Sunken Pyramid, just because if you are killing them in it Tier Dawn, then it is a bit slow. They are spread out, so it won't be as efficient. Um, also required is a high combat level. Crystal Shapeshifters, they hit really hard. They have a few special attacks, so you'll want to have a high combat level just so you can deal with that. Um, and recommended is wearing one to three pieces of crystal equipment you could even go full five however i like having the melee body and legs just for the strength bonus it's just um, because the crystal equipment is hybrid armor so it doesn't have that bonus but it does provide bonuses when you are killing the crystal shapeshifters so if you do have one piece on then it will actually increase the amount of tardian crystals that are dropped by one so Tardian Crystals, they're worth around 2k each when you do trade them in, so it will increase your GP per hour by quite a bit. If you do have two pieces on you, it will actually give you a 5% damage increase to Crystal Shapeshifters. And then three pieces will allow you to activate Tardian Fury. Um, and four pieces basically allows Tardian Fury to remove bleeds and stuns. I would recommend using three pieces. I think that is the best amount you can use when doing this method. So as I mentioned, you will want to be killing the crystal shapeshifters in your player owned slayer dungeon. So make sure you have a room set up. Um, that is the best way to do this method. Um, I prefer only having three of them in there since they do hit really hard and they can sort of KO you if you have four or five on you. So I recommend only having three um, unless you want to use a vampirism of scrimshaw the entire time, then you could probably have four or five. Um, but I would just recommend having a AOE ability bar active. If you guys can see my AOE um, or my action bar, you'll see that I have Meteor Strike on first, then Hurricane and Quake, um, and then Cleave. So these are all my AOE abilities. I'm also using um, Praying Soul Split. You do not want to pray Protect Melee because they can use any combat style. 
Um, they can switch to magic and you don't want that. You want them to come up close to you so you can hit them with your AOE abilities. So for that reason, just stick with soul splits and then use turmoil, of course. Um, this method is really simple. You're just going to want to pick up all of the items that they do drop. They're all noted, so you shouldn't have any problem with that. Make sure you have the spring cleaner since they do have some items that you can uh, alk with that. Overall, you'll make around 7 mil per hour doing this method. It is a little bit intensive since you do need to make sure you aren't going to be getting killed by these crystal shapeshifters. It isn't a fully AFK method, so make sure you just are paying attention when you are doing this method. Moving on to this next method, we have going through the Anachronia Agility course. So the requirements for this method include 85 agility. You'll need this to get through the entire agility course. Also recommended is 30 magic, bladed dive, double surge, and the mobile perk just so you can get through the agility course a bit quicker. The agility cape, which does require 99 agility, is also helpful since it will make it so you won't fail any obstacles. Now, you will require 750 of the codex pages to make one of these codexes. You can make an untradable version for the 500 codex pages that you can only use yourself. However, the 750 ones, the tradable ones, they can be traded on the Grand Exchange for around 50 to 60 mil right now. This method is quite simple. You're just going to be going through the agility course. You can go through either end. It sometimes is a bit difficult to see the obstacles within the Anachronia Agility course. So just one tip that I have for you guys is try and look for the white markings. You can see some white handprints or white footprints um, sometimes wherever you're going. But you might get lost if you're not um, fully aware of the Agility course. It might take you a few runs through for you to become really efficient with it just because it is sort of blends in with the rest of the environment um, but that being said that's all of their, this method is is just going through this agility course getting the codex pages so then you can make the codex um, which does sell for 50 to 60 mil and it should take you around nine hours to complete one of these codexes our next method is killing smoke nihils. You can make around 6 mil per hour doing this method. It's also a pretty fun method. You're doing a bit of combat and it is sort of relaxed since nihils don't hit you too hard. The requirements for this method include 76 slayer and 87 summoning to make the nihil pouches. You'll also require the fate of the gods quest to be completed. And recommended is 80 plus range to kill the smoke nigh hills. Um, 81 divination is really helpful because then you can transmute the um, Avianchi talons into any of the other uh, ingredients for the nigh hill pouches. So, for example, if the blood nigh hill pouches are the most expensive at the time, then you could transmute the Avianchi talons into the vampire fangs to make the blood nigh hill pouches instead. And the final recommendation is having overloads. That's because smoke nine hills have a special ability where it will lower your stats. However, if you do have overloads active, your stats are have a static boost, meaning they cannot be decreased. So to start this method, you'll want to go to the world gate. Make sure you go to Freneske in the pit. Um, once you get here, you'll want to run to the center of the pit and you'll get an option to spawn the Nihil Slayer creatures. You'll want to select that option and then the Nihils will spawn. So for this method, we're going to be specifically targeting the Smoke Nihils. They are the green ones. That is because their special attack is the easiest to deal with. As I mentioned, if you do have an Overload active, your stats are static, so when they do use their special attack, it won't do anything. So just focus on these smoke nigh hills, pick up all of their drops, especially their Avianchi Talons, because that's where you are going to be making most of the money. Um, and if you do have Corruption Blast, then I would recommend putting this at the top of the action bar. It's just so it does hit some other nigh hills around it. Um, so you might be able to hit some other of these nigh hills and lower them. Um, and then you can switch to killing, uh, for example, the Ice Nigh Hills when they are low on health. That's because um, you won't uh, need to deal with their abilities if you do kill them fast enough. So if you do use Corruption Blast and it weakens all the other Nigh Hills, it will help you out. And you can get uh, some more kills on them as well. 
Just pick up all of the important drops. That's the Vampire Fangs, the Avianchi Talons, Icy and Feathers, and the Demon Horns. You are going to be using these along with the Elder Charms and Elder Energy to make the Nihil Pouches. And that's where you are making most of your money. Now, once you are done killing the Nihils, you can actually transmute them, as I mentioned, into the best uh, item. So, for example, um, the Ice Nihil Pouches are the best. So, I'm going to be transmuting all of my Avianchi Talons and the Demon Horn into Icy and Feathers. So, then I can make the Ice Nihil Pouches and sell them for the most profit. Once you do this, you will want to bring the Icy and Feathers, the uh, Elder Charms, a pouch and some Elder Energy to the Obelisk, and you can make the Nihil Pouches. These Nihil Pouches are selling for a ton right now. They're selling for nearly 300k each, um, so you're going to be making a ton of money off of them since it's only an uncommon drop to get this. And moving on to our next method, we have killing the Shadow Reef mobs. This is a pretty low to mid-level method. Um, you can make around 5 mil per hour doing it, and you get a ton of combat XP as well, upwards of 1 mil combat XP per hour. The requirements for this method include 80 plus combat, as well as 43 prayer for protect from melee. You'll basically need this at least when you are doing this method. And also recommended is Curse of the Black Stone quest. This is a really helpful quest since it will reduce the damage you take in all elite dungeons by 10%. So to start this method, head to Daemonheim to go into Elite Dungeon 3, the Shadow Reef. You'll want to start by making sure that the chest picks up all of the drops for you. Um, I recommend using either Melee or Magic, whichever one you're best with. Um, and then you're just going to be going through the dungeon, killing all of the mobs. Um, the only mobs you don't have to kill are the Deep Horrors. They are pretty tough to kill, um, so it's recommended just to run by those. The Deep Horrors are located just right here. Just make sure that you run right by them and just continue on um, going through the dungeon until you reach the first boss. Once you do this, you'll want to restart and kill all the mobs over again. Going through these dungeons will make you around 5 mil per hour just by claiming the loot from the chest. And those are the 10 money methods I have for you guys in this video. As I mentioned, jump back and forth between any method that you do enjoy. The timestamps are in the description below. I really hope you guys did find this video helpful and I'm sure you at least found one or two of these methods useful for your own account where you can make yourself some money. If you guys did enjoy this video and this kind of video, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified for more videos like this. There is going to be a ton more. My channel really does focus on money making guides, so I'm going to continue doing that. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.